Hello, my name is Lance Post. I'm a Vice President here at Artificial Medical Intelligence, and today I'm going to give you a high-level walkthrough of the mScribe CAC application. We're going to start from the top of the application, work our way down to the bottom, and I'm going to explain some of the key features while we're doing so. All right, so let's start up at the top here. This top bar is called the Options Bar. It provides the user certain options that they can utilize while working inside the application. You can see that some of these are grayed out and will not be enabled until after you download an account. One of the more popular ones is the font option, which allows the user to change the font inside the application, giving them a more customized view. You can change the size of the font or the font itself, and it will carry over between all the screens. Moving further to the right, we have a slider here. And this enables the application to operate in three modes. It can operate in facility mode only, it can operate in profi mode only, or it can operate in both, what we call dual coding mode. And while you're in dual coding mode, you can start off in the profi side, coding your profi code groups, and it will move all that coded data over to the facility side, and it will eliminate all, all need for double entry. We also have a reports function here that will allow the users to get in and pull any report that AMI has built for them. And then we have the administration function. Administration function allows administrators or supervisors the ability to go in and change users' permissions, add users to the systems, deactivate users, and also more importantly, allows the enabling of what we call audit checks. Audit checks are little software checks that we've enabled in the system that allows the application to stop an account from being submitted if it is missing crucial information that the site has determined. This prevents it from having to go out and get caught by a claim scrubber further down the road. It will, you can fix the account before it leaves the department. Okay, next we have part of the options bars, the second row, we have an account window here. This allows you to type in an account number here and manually download the account. And download means to pull the account from the database. We have an upload feature here, and that puts the application into send mode, and it will send the account back to the database. We have a save function, which will allow you to save where you're at. So if you've coded an account, but you don't want to quite submit it just yet, you can save it, and it'll save your progress. You have a submit function here, and this is what we call the global submit. So if you are in facility mode coding or profi mode coding, it will submit all the information at one time for you. APC DRG function will pull the encoder. It will send anything you have open inside the account window and it will send it to your encoder. Medical necessity will do medical necessity checks to make sure that you are not sending out anything erroneously that's going to get caught in your scrubber. And then we have the code lookup function. The code lookup function will be tied to a new release coming down that will have something called dynamic search. Okay, below this we have our global window. And this global tab right here, this global row of data, it's called global because it will be there while you have an account downloaded. When you download an account, all the demographics will be populated no matter what tab you're in. You can always see the discharge date, admin date, MRN, so on and so forth. This is entirely customizable by the site. You can tell us what options you want in here, up to 16 fields, and we will put that in there for you. And it literally takes minutes to configure this. All right, we'll come to the main body of the application in just a second, but let's jump down to the bottom here. First, we have something called Select Queue. And this will allow you to see all the queues that we have enabled for your facility. And you can have one queue, you can have 100 queues. It depends on how granular the site wants to get with their workflow. So you tell us what the specifications are for how you want work to be presented to your users, and that's how we will build the queues. Moving to the right, you'll see three radio buttons here. First is manual, and that's the mode that we are in now. This allows you to either type an account number in the window here, or you can click on something inside of your work list. Next is auto-download. Auto-download, when you click on this, you download the first account, and after that, a new account, once you're complete, once you save and upload or you submit an account, 
the next one in line will be dropped into your queue. And we have select from pool. Pool is another workflow feature that will allow a group of users to share the same queue. And when you have select from pool, it means you're going to get the next one that's available in the list. So if three people are using the queue and you have a select from pool enabled, you'll get the next one that someone does not already have in their window. And auto assign, what it does is that when you download an account, all the codes that mscribe has suggested will automatically default to the secondary position. And we'll explain more about positions once we get into an application, or once we get into an account. So now let's jump into the body here. So as you can see, we have certain tabs, and we're going to go from left to right, explaining what these tabs do. All right, so the Assignments tab, this shows all the accounts that are available in a, in a queue. And so right now we're in an ambulatory surgery queue, as we can see here, and these are all the accounts that we have. As you can see, there's four colors here. We'll start off with red, and red is pending, meaning that the account is brand new. Nobody's touched it, no one's seen it, it's new to the queue, and it's available for download. Next, we'll have a blue, and blue means it's been reviewed. Somebody has looked at it and either uploaded it or saved their work and uploaded it. And that's what blue represents. Somebody has reviewed it. Then we have black, and that's account on hold. Someone downloaded this account and determined that it was had a deficiency where they could not complete the work. So they assign a pending reason to it, and I'll explain that once we get into an application. And then what everybody wants to see is green. That's approved. That means that this account has been coded and submitted. It's gone to billing. And we have periodic maintenance on these queues where it will pull those approved accounts out so it cleans up your work list. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this one up top here. And we're going to download it into the application. And since we're in manual mode, just clicking on it downloads it into the account. As you can see here now, all of our demographics are populated up here. And now we are in the details screen. After you download an account from the assignments tab, you move to the right, and this is the details tab. And it's broken into three windows. First side on the left is going to be your document tree. As you can see, you have your account number and all the documents that we've received through this particular account. And this documentation can come from anywhere. You will determine from your inside your facility what documents we get. Preferably, we would like to get everything. If you have any type of document, whether it's one interface or 20 interfaces, we would like to build those, bring those in so you have a complete picture of the account and you can code more thoroughly. Now, as you click on a document, you will see it'll show here into the middle section, which is the body of text. And then on the far right, we have the coding view. And this is going to show you any codes that were found inside this document itself. Now, you can see here that N84.0, polyp of corpus uteri, we click on this and it's highlighted in red. Red means that this is a suggested code. It's red because we've highlighted it here. Now, if we go into what we call map mode, Right now we're in document mode. We're going to switch to map mode. And what it will do is it will pull all the code from across the entire account into your window here. And these are all the codes that are found here. Sometimes it may be a little overwhelming, so we'll just switch back to the document view. Now let's go into our port of operation and our operative note, and we'll click on this. And now we can see that we have ICD-10 diagnostic codes, and we have CPT codes. And if we click on a code here, it's going to take you and highlight where the code was found inside the document itself. And as you can see, these highlighted items are called tokens. This is Mscribe's way of saying, we found this medical token. We've assigned an ICD-10 diagnosis procedure or a CPT code to it for your, rec you know, it's recommended for you. As you click on these, it will highlight. As you can see, these number twos, side hit, show that this code was found more than once inside this document, as you can see here. So let's say we want to use this. We want to select abnormal uterine bleeding as our principal and visit reason. You simply click on the highlighted item, assign and delete codes box will show up. 
We can add visit and principal here in our position, and we can save this. Now the code's turned green. That means that it's been selected for billing positions. Now we also want to select our CPT code. We'll scroll down here. Here's our CPT code highlighted. We're going to click on that. We're going to make it our principal CPT. We're going to hard code our rev code, and we're going to click Save. Now, we can go to the patient account information screen. We can verify the attending and admitting position. We can verify all of our abstracted data is here, and if it's not, we can add it in. We can go to our charges tab. Mscribe also will interface with your CDM. We can put anything we want in here. If we're looking for a 8,000 or a 4,000 series code, we can just type in 4. And what it'll do is it'll pull up all the codes we have in here that have a 4 in the description. And we're going to assign that because no one's going to remember the CDM code by heart, but they do know the CPT code or they know a piece of the description. And we're going to assign that. And now, your charge is completely filled out inside your application. No need to enter it in. It's already filled in. We're going to go to our face sheet. This is the last screen that you're going to see before you submit the counts of billings. However, if there is something deficient in here, if you're missing something, here's where you would add your pending reasons. And these are all the pending reasons. These are all customizable by you. You can select whatever pending reason you'd like. And when you select the pending reason, it's going to pop up an account note. It wants to know why you are pending this. Now, as you can see here, the submit and the submit are grayed out because there is a pending reason. So let's remove that pending reason. We've done everything we need to do. Now we're going to submit. And we can click on our global submit here. Oh, but wait, an audit rule is fired. We're missing our OR time, and we're missing our anesthesia type. We need to go back and correct that. So we can go back to our patient account information screen. We're going to add in our OR minutes, which we would find from the surgical report, and the anesthesia type, which should also be found from the surgical report. We've added these in. Now we'll try to submit again. And there you go. The account has been submitted. Now you're free to move to the next account. So that's the high-level overview of how the application works. Um, I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please visit our website, uh, artificialmed.com. All right, thank you very much.